Hello you guys and welcome to Mr. and Mrs. Social Studies. My name is Sarah and in today's video we are going to conclude our mini series here about different parts of Google Drive and how you can use it in the classroom. So far we've talked about Google Docs, Google Slides, and Google Forms. Now we're going to talk about Google Drawings. If you'd like to check out any of those past videos, I have them linked in the description field below so you can look at them there. Now I must admit for a while I kind of ignored Google Drawings and just really focused on the other ones we've already talked about, but there are really amazing educational uses for Google Drawings and then today I'm going to share my top three favorite ones. Let's begin. My first suggestion, which works for social studies, but really any other subject, is to put together a collage on Google Drawings. Because you're able to easily format backgrounds, layer different images, and you can still add text, making a collage is a really great option. A really easy last minute type of assignment or assessment or prep for a activity to do with your students is to have them create a collage about whatever events you're studying. So for instance, last year I had my students create a World War I collage when looking at the effects of World War I. They had a specific topic to research, but then they included images to be able to represent it as well as captions for it. This year I had New Year's Choice Projects when the students came back from break, and one of the things that a lot of students did was to create a vision board, and one of the options for students who did a vision board was to put it on Google Drawings, and a lot of students did that, and it's just a really nice way you can create a visual and everything's there for you in that one file. You can also use Google Drawings for a mapping activity. This was something that Jake recently did in his classroom, but if you want your students to do some mapping, whether it's labeling a map, identifying certain natural resources or natural landmarks, this option can work really well. You start out by selecting a certain blank map or a map that you find online that you'd like to use, and you put it in the center of the drawing. Then you give students a list of what they need to label, and they'll create text boxes to label each thing with arrows as well as finding an additional picture of it. And it's a way that makes mapping a lot more interactive and tech-based, but I also think it helps students to better visualize actual places and landforms. For instance, if you just had students label rivers or a mountain range on the map with pencil and paper, that's fine, but they're not going to actually be able to visualize it. However, using it on drawings, they're still looking where it is by using the labels and the arrows to put it on this map, but they also are finding a picture of this. So they're actually searching whatever that is, you know, a Mississippi River, the Alps, the Rocky Mountains, whatever different features they have to label, they are able to find those, a beautiful picture of them and insert that into their slide. And so I think it's just a way we can go above and beyond through using the technology. My last idea for using Google Drawings in the classroom is with illustrated notes. I've done this a couple times with students as part of choice projects, but you instead of just having students take regular notes or record something in a more written way, they add pictures to illustrate different concepts. And you can do this on paper, is how I've had students do it more so, but also digitally. Using different images there as well as words can create a really lovely visual. Overall, I hope you guys give these strategies a try. No matter what your content area is or the age level that you teach, I feel like I sometimes have forgotten about it and I don't want you to do the same. I hope these are useful things that you can apply into your classroom. And if any of these are interesting, I'd love to hear from you below in the comments which one you think you'd be most likely to try in your classroom. Thanks again for watching our Google Drive series. If you wanted to check out some of the past videos, you can do so here or subscribe to the channel. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.